I've been quite eager to try out the weapon and spell randomizer mods for quite some time now. The problem was, as usual, in finding a suitable character for such a run. That is when I had a brilliant idea. In the movie, The Mask, the titular object grants the main character the ability to summon an infinite number of seemingly random weapons. With the proper character found, I went back to the drawing board to refine this build and download the suitable mods, the links to which will be in the description. So for this run I will be using two mods, a weapon randomizer and a spell randomizer. The weapon randomizer mod will randomize the weapons in my right hand to any weapon or shield in the weapon pool at a random upgrade level and the spell randomizer will cycle between the available spells based on my intelligence level and both mods will cycle between the items once every 10 seconds. Besides that, I didn't really set myself any other rules for this run, other than to have fun, that is. So, with the quick intro out of the way, let's get to it. Starting out, I did the usual chores, like grabbing the Physic Flask, the Dectus Medallion, the Green Turtle Talisman, and the Radagon Sword Seal, which will be crucial throughout the run. I also got two Physic Tears to improve my Strength and Dexterity by 10 points, then I went over to Kaylee to grab the staff I will be using for a large portion of the game, which is the Meteorite Staff. To wield it though, I needed to have my Intelligence to be at 18 points, and for that, I needed the help of the ever so humble Knight's Cavalry, who generously provided me a decent number of runes, which I tried to allocate as evenly as I could. I then explored Atos Plateau for a bit and went back to the round table to sell all of the spare rooms I acquired along the way and leveled up just a bit more. With that done, I was happy enough to go fight Margit. Look, I don't want to talk about this, okay? The playstyle for this build is actually wild. At one point I can be the most powerful being in the arena and 10 seconds later I get Thops' barrier and a torch and I once again remember that I am not the boss of the encounter. But regardless, the goal of the first boss fight is always about me testing the waters. Fun fact, I actually made a full 25 hour run as the mask right before this one, but in that one I only used randomized weapons without the spells and I restricted myself to only level up bigger. Once I made a draft version of the video, I realized that it's just not fun to watch. As a content creator, sometimes you just have to admit to yourself that whatever you're doing is just not entertaining enough and start over. Which I did, and after finishing this video I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. But anyway, Margit went down and with a pretty decent understanding of how this build works, I was confident enough to start the shot bearer boss rush mode, beginning with Godric, which was about as insane and unpredictable as the fight with Margit. With Godric defeated, the next boss I wanted to try out was Radon.
With two Shroud Barrows down, I decided to progress through Rani's questline, but for a different reason as opposed to the previous video. This time, I needed the Magic Scorpion Charm, which you can get by progressing through Celibus' questline. Half an hour fetch quest later, I got the Talisman and was happy enough to go fight Renala. But before that, I quickly grabbed the Graven Skull Talisman and went ahead and disposed of Renala herself, which was about as difficult as getting the runes from the Knight's Cavalry. Side note, I actually got super lucky and got good weapons, but that's besides the point. So, time to explore the capital, and as usual, the first hurdle I needed to overcome was the Tree Sentinel. It took me about 3 hours to get through him, and even then I was barely holding on to Sanity. But the next boss of the Legacy Dungeon, however, was a good training dummy for what was to come later. <laughs> With Lane Dell almost done with, I finally got to Morgoth and began the boss fight. It was definitely sloppy, super unorganized, and at some point I just lost all understanding of what was happening, but hey, I got him on my first try, which is what matters most at the end of the day. Time for the mountaintops, where the only thing I did was grab the closest sight of Grace to the Fire Giant, but before fighting him though, I needed a massive boost in my levels, and Vari's questline would help me out a ton of that. After completing it, I was able to reach the rune farm spot to get a couple of levels, and after that, I decided to grab the hidden medallion, and to assist me with beating Command Denial, I decided to get the Bewitching Branches, which I have not used in quite some time. After getting the first half of the medallion, I grabbed the second one and started the fight with the fire giant, which went about as well as I would have expected. After spending 10 minutes fighting this thing and doing pretty friggin well for that matter, he just decided to crush me with his body weight. This is about as tragic as it could get. Regardless though, after a few attempts, emphasis on the word few, I was able to beat this guy which opened up the path to Fire Missoula, where I was finally able to reach my beloved Godskin duo fight. The strat this time was slightly different to how I usually approach these guys, for obvious reasons. I put them both to sleep and as soon as I would get something decent, I would start beating the crap out of the two of them. On the off chance that I would get something abysmal, I would just make a few laps around the arena waiting for something good to appear either in my right hand or in the spell slot. And I say on the off chance, this actually happened quite a lot. Anyway, with the strat in place, I was able to beat these two on the third attempt. Yeah. 
With a little more rune farming, I was able to reach 52 intelligence, which allowed me to use Lusad's staff. I chose it over Azura's staff because I think that this build prefers damage over increased casting speed, but Ivory's staff is good. After getting it, I went over to the round table to improve it up to plus 7 just to keep the spirit of the challenge intact, and with that done, it was time for Malikath. Gideon was a pain in the ass. Without a set weapon, it was super difficult to beat this guy. A good strat I found was a similar one to the God Scans, where I would just take cover and wait for a decent weapon to appear in my right hand, and eventually, I was able to beat this spamming coward because a certain weapon that I got actually had a poison affinity on it, which allowed me to poison this guy, and all I really had to do at the end of the fight was just watch him keel over and die, which is super lucky on my part. Okay, but enough of talking about this clown, because it's Godfrey o'clock.
After dealing with Godfrey, I went over to the Helic Tree where I got the Pearl Drake Talisman, had a quick fight with Loretta, and finally got the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. Since I was nearing the end of the game and the bosses would get pretty crazy soon, I decided to upgrade my staff a little bit more, to plus 9 to be specific. I then decided to try out Melania. I am Melania. Blade. <laughs> Yeah, I would need a few more levels to compete with her. Thankfully, I know just the right bosses who would give me a lot of runes. Okay, so I was expecting Riker to be a major pain in the rear, but I was not ready for him to be the bane of my existence. While the Serpent phase was somewhat easy to go through, as it usually is, but without the Serpent Hunter, the second phase was just wild. On one of the attempts, I was actually able to get the Serpent Hunter not once, but twice. But don't you worry, I fumbled the bag hard a few minutes later and got belly flopped by Rykard. 
tragic. I spent all my luck on that attempt, by the way, and I would never see the Serpent Hunter for the rest of the game. After what seemed like an eternity, I just gave up on Rikard and decided to come back to him later. And I was able to beat this guy on the first attempt a day later. Pretty neat, I must say. With that done, I grabbed Marika's sword seal and completely restructured my build. I was level 150 at that point and I decided to review the stat requirements of all of the weapons in the game, and I was able to come up with a decent stat spread which would allow me to use 90-95% to of the weapons, with the extra 5 levels to all stats from Radagons and Marika's sword seals. So for this build, the base strength we need is 35, which would go to 40 with Radagon's sword seal, that allows the player to wield any weapon two-handed, the base dexterity would be 24, sadly being able to wield things like Melania's and Morgoth's swords will be impossible, then the base faith would be 25, and arcane would be 27, with the highest weapon demanding that being Mogwin's sacred spear. Intelligence at 52 is great for both the Lusad staff and the spell variety as well. Vigor and endurance can be sacrificed in favor of dexterity, but I prefer to have them as high as possible. Besides the two sword seals, I would also use the previously acquired Dragon Crest Rage Shield and the Pearl Drake Talismans, as well as the Opaline Heart Tier to negate the massive downside of having two sword seals active at a time. With the build now ready, and with a slight boost, kudos to Godric's Great Rune, I went over to fight the toughest boss of this run, Melania. Most of the final 10 minute long fight looked like this, so I'll just cut all the unnecessary fluff and leave only the cool stuff.
With the hardest boss out of the way with, it was now time for the last boss duo, Radagon and the Elden Beast, which I must say ended in quite a spectacular, highly appropriate and fitting fashion. So, thank you for watching this video, I hope you've had as much fun watching it as I've had fun making it. If you're in the mood to spice up your Elden Ring experience, and if you're on PC, do try out the randomizer mods, they're really fun. So, once again, thank you everybody for watching, have a good one, peace. <laughs>